Hi, my name is Thomas Fredholm. Uh, I'm sitting here together with Vintage and Rare at the annual Scandinavian Guitar Show in Stockholm. Uh, this year I brought a couple of different instruments to last year. It's pretty much in the Gibson size family somehow. Uh, I really do have a thing for Gibsons uh, when it comes to the aesthetic and the designs and stuff, especially the sunbursts, which are absolutely incredible. Uh, when it comes to tonal quality and the beauty of instruments, I'm really a Martin guy. However, I've been making a few Gibson size instruments. This is one of them, which I made just a couple of months ago, a month ago, whatever. Uh, it's an L00 size, or the Blues King, I think they call them also. Uh, what I've done with this one is to try to get the aesthetics or the, the kind of the lines of, of the L00 combined with what I find is the really nice side of the uh, really old vintage Martins. Um, the little aesthetic differences with this one to, to the Gibsons, of course, is uh, it's not a sunburst, but I also put some black mother of pearl as inlays, which I find is really beautiful. It's really something different. Uh, I do add red paduk binding on it. It's an Indian rosewood back and side, and it's an Italian spruce top. Uh, for me, Italian spruce is really nice. It's slightly lighter than German spruce and uh, lighter weight-wise, uh, also lighter color-wise sometimes. Uh, but um, I, I really do like that. Uh, I think of this L00 size, you, you get some real beauty of a small instrument. You get the basis of a, a big instrument. And really something I do like. I'll probably stick to making a few of these ones. I made a similar one ju just a couple of months ago uh, and that was Brazilian Rosewood. Uh, it's of course as I did, talked about in the last little talk we had here with Vintage and Rare. There's a lot of talk about Brazilian versus Indian Rosewood, all the other woods. Uh, as I mentioned before, I do love my Indian rosewood. The, the Brazilian I made a couple of months ago had a slightly different character. No quality difference whatsoever. Uh, slightly heavier maybe somehow, uh, but I do really find this one has got the, the good sides of Brazilian and the beauty of uh, the mahogany instrument. Uh, next to me here is a... Um, J200 size, uh, very different to, to the, to the um, Gibson J200, both aesthetically and, uh, and tonal quality-wise. I've really tried to put in the best of a Martin sounding instrument inside this one. So I've, I've kind of, uh, it's, it's actually the same with, with the, the other one. The X-bracing inside is more like in the, in, a, in the Martin style than it is really in the Gibson style. Um, it gives a totally different instrument, though you have the, the looks of, of the Gibson, which I find is very nice in a different way compared to the Martin. Um, but you have, a, in my opinion, much more singing instrument. You have the beautiful basses, you have the uh, beautiful trebles, and the mid range is not bad at all. Also with this one I made a Brazilian one. I made this one which is Indian rosewood back and sides. Uh, top is also Italian spruce. Uh, the difference between the Brazilian and this one, not big. It's not like the, the old big hype says that Brazilian is absolutely fantastic and the other ones are compromises somehow. Uh, this is really nice. I really do like uh, this Indian rosewood. Uh, it's not much really to say about it otherwise it's 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 got a totally different look to it it's got a pyramid bridge which is more like in the in the martin line of course the the gibson bridges were a totally different thing more like a mustache thing or whatever uh, this is it um so it's a bit of a gibson time this time even though i'm a martin guy basically uh, you see a couple of Martin instruments behind here, Martin looking instruments anyway. There's a Baby Ditson which I brought last year, there's a Dreadnought, 
which I didn't bring last year. It's, it's got uh, ju just ivory bindings and stuff. Uh, but this year I also brought a mandolin. I, I started making F5 mandolins a couple of years ago, so I'm really in the beginning of that. Um, I do put a shellac on these instruments too, as I do on, on all my instruments. Uh, it's basically really good, though it's got its drawbacks. It's, it's a bit delicate. If you, you don't want to stick your, your flat pick right into, into the shellac, uh, you will have a big scratch. Uh, then again, you can't get it all. It's, it's a good sounding lacquer or whatever finish. Uh, it's also really beautiful if, if you can manage making a fantastic shellac finish. Um, with this one, I've been spraying the shellac, a really difficult thing, uh, but uh, I'm slowly learning and, and it's, uh, it's getting there somehow. So um, I, I've just finished my, my third F5 and uh, there's going to be a few more coming. So thank you for your time and uh, I do hope you got to learn something, something more about instruments maybe and, uh, and a bit more about my instruments. And if you want to learn even more or check my instruments or other instruments out, do check vintageandrare.com and, and you'll be fine.